Hello, folks. Welcome back to Ferox Frank Reviews. I thought I was prepared for this movie. I, I really thought I was prepared for this movie. But I wasn't. No. I wasn't. This movie was bad. Yeah. Today's movie was a bad one. Because today, I have to talk about Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Not really a good movie at all whatsoever. I mean, I mean, I was kind of iffy about this movie even back in high school when I first saw it. Like, uh, back in high school, I was really getting into the slasher genre a lot. Like, uh, it was, like, really one of my things aside from watching action movies, Chicken and Hot Babes, anime, pro wrestling, sports, you name it. You know, pretty much any typical teenage boy shit. But, Holy shit, I was not prepared to how bad this movie really was. You know, I've actually grown appreciation for some of the, for all these other movies. I mean, for example, Halloween 1 is loved, uh, I mean beloved by many by many film goers, including people who aren't fans of horror, love this movie because it's a staple of the Halloween fran it's a staple of Halloween itself. And it was a good movie. The second one, not so much as good one. I mean, some people actually do really like it, though, but honestly, it's kind of a long snooze fest because there's a lot, nothing going on. Halloween 3 changed up the formula by making it an anthology film series, which, honestly, not a bad idea, but they should have done that with Halloween 2, but I guess they just needed the closure of what happened with uh, Michael Myers, so, yeah. Halloween 4 was... Michael Myers returned, and this time it was the first Halloween film that took place during the boom of the 1980s slasher genre. And so Michael was trying to make his staple in that genre, which he already did because he was the one who actually made the whole thing. Yeah. As for his fifth film, so oh, not good at all. Where do I begin with this one? Well, for starters, uh, the film went, it was greenlit right after the second film premiered, or after the fourth film had premiered, and most of the, and originally the idea was to actually have Jamie become a, become a psycho killer in the next movie or something, but they decided to change that and bring Michael Myers back again. Also, four was actually the start of the whole Thorn trilogy of films, all right? The Thorn trilogy of films starts with four, five, and six. But there's a problem with this. The fourth film has no signs of it whatsoever. And if you get a closer, but if you get a closer look at Michael Myers' wrist, like right here, he's supposed to have a tattoo of Thorn, which shows a lot in this movie. But uh, it's not in the in the fourth film at all. In fact, his skin is mostly just burned. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. I mean, I, I can't believe this film got greenlit. So, and to make it even worse, uh, yeah, most of the cast and crew came back, uh, but they had a completely different director, and the people who wrote the script, well, when the film was greenlit and they started shooting, the script was nowhere near finished, so they made shit up as they went, as they went along with it. Which, and the result became just nothing more but a massive, confusing mess of a movie. In fact, the Rachel character, which we've gone, which we've actually known to actually care about in the fourth movie, gets axed off early in this movie. Yeah, and she's replaced by some other character called Tina. Where do I begin with this? You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna start with the. I'm just gonna start the movie off for right now. Just get this shit over with. Oh. So the movie basically starts. Pretty much towards the ending of the fourth film, where they act, after the sheriff's department actually shoot up Michael Myers, and he goes and he drops down to a grave. It turns out it's actually a mine shaft, and so and we actually see a deleted portion from the movie, which was they actually take a they take some dynamite, toss it down there, but Michael crawls his way out, makes his way down uh, downstream they, while the while the entire thing explodes, but he's picked up by some hobo and immediately cared for because Michael Lair passes out after he meets the hobo. <laughs> and what happened to Jamie Lloyd? Uh, did she kill her stepmother? Uh, supposedly they read con that saying that she only attacked her stepmother. So yeah, so she was still alive, and 
she's now in a mental asylum, a, a children's a, a psychology clinic, where she has lost the ability to speak uh, due to the fact that Michael had placed somehow of a curse on her, like his evil past. Like when she physically touched him or, hoarded, or held his hand, the evil passed from him to her only for a brief moment or something. It's something that never is explained. A little bit, but to make it worse, somehow Jamie is psychically connected to Michael. Why? I have no idea. There were others. You know what's even worse about this? There were other slasher films that came out around this point in time that were just terrible films, and they did the exact same thing. So having Halloween do it, that's fucking desperate at this point. But so we only see mostly Rachel a lot in the third, mostly in the third act of the movie. I mean, mostly in the first act of the movie, where we're introduced to another to another girl called Tina, who we have no idea who her relationship with is with Jamie, but Jamie does care about her. It's like seriously, what? But I think maybe Tina's character was introduced in the fourth film. I couldn't remember her character at all. There was another character. There was another female character that was with uh, Rachel earlier in Halloween Four, but uh, that was the girl from Part One. Uh, but, but that was Lindsay from. Uh, and yes, it was confirmed that that was actually Lindsay from Part One. <laughs> yeah, the surviving girl, little girl Lindsay, was in Part One, and Tommy was actually in Part Four, trying to hit on the sheriff's daughter. Who I just remember, who I cannot believe I forgot to re mention this, but um, at the time I probably didn't know about this, but she was also Lorenzo Lamas' ex wife. At the time, uh, she got married to Lorenzo Lamas, L Lorenzo Lamas as well. So, hey, just a little side note. Now you know. <sighs> anyway, Lamas is being, uh, is keeping an eye on Jamie because he knows that somehow Michael is linked to her. Anyway, Jamie somehow wakes up in the middle of the night because Michael can sense the, the the evil Michael is is actually waking up. He gets up from the, the hobo bench, and here's the thing too. Now, if you had this movie on VHS and you paused it at the right moment, you, you can basically see Michael's face, but it's so well. It's on a VHS, so you can't see, make out his face that well. And the early DVD versions actually have the same problem, but the later DVD editions and the Blu-ray edition, which I own. If you pause it, you can clearly see Michael's face, and he looks fine. I mean, he looks normal. Continuity-wise, wasn't, wasn't his face burned? He, shouldn't he have burn scars all over his face? Whatever. It's just really, really confusing. But then again, everything is all confusing. So he kills the hobo and takes off, and he goes out. And this time around, Michael goes after Rachel. And Jamie cannot talk, like I said. She mostly just does sign language at this point. Uh, pretty fucking stupid, I imagine. Anyway, uh, we're also introduced to Tina as well. They actually Tina suggested that maybe Rachel should go with her to the Halloween party, but Rachel's supposed to be going to, uh, the, supposed to, go into a cabin later anyway. So Rachel basically just uh, goes to her home, goes back home, ties up her dog on the outside of the house. Okay, spoiler alert: Michael does eventually kill that dog, but we don't actually see it, and it's an off-screen death. So, okay, um, what was the point of that? So, anyway, of it. Anyway, Michael basically stalks her for a little while though, but then she winds up leaving the house because Jamie had a vision that he was in the house. Loomis calls her up and tells her to get out of the house. They had the cops come by, and and here's one of the weakest points of the whole goddamn movie. We see two dim-witted cops that have goofy sound effects accompanying these guys all the time. I'm not even joking. Like if you turn the volume up on the film, you can actually hear the the goofy music sound effects in the background. Who thought that was a good idea? I mean. Wow. What? Uh, wow. I hope these fuckers die. Oh, wait, they do. Thank you, Michael Myers, for killing them. But that doesn't happen until much later. So we have to endure the stupidityness a bit further. <sighs> so who are these guys? I'm just going to call them dipshit and dumbass. Yeah, dipshit and dumbass. Because uh, that's all they are. They're stupid beyond recognition. 
And um, just quote the uh, sheriff from uh, Night of the Living Dead. They're dumb. They're dumb. They're stupid. So eventually, Michael actually does kill Rachel, which was pretty messed up. Which is really messed up because we've actually grown accustomed to Rachel from the fourth film. Having her killed off in this movie makes no fucking sense whatsoever. But then again, have you seen Nightmare Part Four? <laughs> Nightmare on Street Part Four? <laughs> yeah. The surviving cast members of that movie got killed off. The, the surviving cast members of the third film get killed off in that movie. What the fuck? <laughs> actually, nothing. Actually, to be fair, I should probably review those movies sooner or later. You know, because my buddy One Shoe Wonder, uh, Bill the One Shoe Wonder, is actually a huge fan of those movies. So I guess eventually I'm going to have to review them sooner or later. So don't worry, Bill. I will get to those films eventually. Somehow. <laughs> I don't know. I got like one more Friday the 13th film that's, that's by Paramount. So maybe after that film, I'll get to those movies. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> more bullshit aside, we now actually, since Grace was no longer in the movie, now we follow Tina around for no apparent reason. She meets up with her friend named Sammy, and they meet up with their boyfriends. Michael stalks them, of course. And, and of course, Tina's boyfriend is coincidentally named Michael. And yes, we actually see Michael in the background. Half, you can literally see Michael Myers in the background half the time, as he's just basically stalking them. So yeah, uh, right, so yeah, Sammy's boyfriend gets Mike and some, uh, some beer, and Michael comes up right behind him, exactly, just, uh, Mike actually cares about his car too much, he's a, he's like, yeah, I'm a hot rodder, yeah, I care about this car, you touch this car, I'll fucking kill you, man, hmm. oh yeah, just get my hair, so, and guess what Michael Myers does, he gets a garden rake and sit, and slant, and scratches the back of the car, it's like, and what does Mike do? You're fucking dead, asshole, you're dead, uh, but don't worry, he gets killed off real quickly. Michael grabs him by the throat, chokes him out, and takes the garden rake ah. in the head. He's dead. And he just drags him away. He grabs the Halloween mask that Tina gave him, and his jacket, and his gloves. And what's he do with the body? Throws it in the dumpster. Actually, I really don't know what he did with the body, and honestly, I really don't give a shit, because actually, now that I think about it, I don't think anybody gave a shit about that character. Fuck him. He was a throwaway character. Anyway, uh, J anyway, Jamie is actually entering a little bit of a Halloween pa a costume pageant with her with her boy uh, with her boyfriend. I'd say boy who's a friend, honestly, named Billy, who has a stuttering problem, but he's a really nice kid, and she does care about him. And she's dressed up as a as a very beautiful little princess. So, actually, I take that back. She's not beautiful. She's adorable. Just saying. Huh. I mean, seriously, if you look at her costume, she's flat out adorable. So it's like, no, you're not, no, Jamie, you're not beautiful. You're adorable. That's all I gotta say. And of course, but there's something else, too, that's a bit of a problem. This was made up on the spot, and this pissed off everybody. Now, when Michael Myers, no, when Michael Myers wakes up, and he turns, we see his hand as he wakes up, and we see this, and it turns over, and he clenches his fist. But as we do that, we see the thorn symbol right here on his left, on his right wrist. Now, there's also something else that I gotta mention. The actor who plays Michael Myers also played this character called the Man in Black. No, it's not an MIB thing, or like an aliens or shit. No, 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 not the whole comic book series. Actually, I've yet to do the, that film series because that film series actually fucked up on the comic books because the comic books were actually much more violent than you can ever imagine and the MIB people actually killed people just to keep secrecy, which I really thought that was a joke until I actually read a couple of, until I actually read one issue. It's like, yeah, it's not a joke. That movie should have been NC-17 rated. No jokes aside. But whatever. This guy is dressed up in all black, black cowboy boots, black slacks, well, actually black jeans, a black long coat and a black cowboy hat, and he has a black bag with him. He's the man in black, and he's got black gloves, and he also has the thorn symbol on his on his right wrist too. Yeah, so this guy is somehow connected with Michael Myers as well, and nobody knows who the fuck this guy is. Well, not exactly true. I mean, if you saw the later film, the sixth movie, we later find out who the guy is. So, and it's fucking stupid, but. 
whatever. So the movie kind of intercuts between... So the, the sexes with the man in black were done mostly at, on the spot. And it was just... And they come in and out out of nowhere. And you it just come and go. And you're like, what the fuck is with this guy? Where is he coming? Why is he coming and going? What is with this guy? Nobody knows who this guy is. So. I mean, my God. Who is this guy? Hey. Michael picks up Tina, and while well, instead of actually killing her, he actually drops her off to get cigarettes. Jamie has a violent vision, uh, and she actually tell, and she actually starts to speak this time. But uh, I guess she finally has the will to speak, and she tells Loomis where Tina is supposedly, and the police go by and pick her up. And Michael just drives right off. Anyways, uh, Tina goes to visit. Uh, goes to visit Jamie in the, in the clinic, and she's actually happy to hear that Jamie's actually speaking this time. But, so I'm going to guess that maybe Jamie is a good, maybe related, could, could actually be related to uh, Rachel, or possibly you know, known Jamie for years, uh, and actually helped grow, actually helped her when she grew up. So I don't know. There's, there's so much backstory on this character we don't know nothing about. So so whatever. She actually wants to believe in to go to a hot... Go to a ray, uh, go to a Halloween party. Lewis tells the uh, tells dipshit and dumbass to go uh, uh, to go with her, actually to drive her. So she go, so she goes there. She meets up with her friends. They pull a stupid Halloween prank on those two characters, but the music's still going off. And guess what? Michael Myers was trailing them the entire time. So they go to a bar and they find some kittens. And the two and Tina goes back to the party while Sam and her boyfriend start to make sweet love until Michael shows up and actually stabs the boyfriend with a pitchfork. Then he gets a go then he gets a scythe and actually cuts the girl. Nah. Not, not much there. Oh yeah. Michael grabs the pitchfork and actually goes right out and yeah, dipshit and dumbass see him and go, hey, come here, you dumbass. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is this? Is this joke to you? What does Michael do? He kills him off screen. You know, I don't know why, but I'm starting to think maybe in the original cut version that when he kills him, they made some goofy sound effects as he was killing them. But actually, joking aside, I wouldn't have mind, I wouldn't have mind seeing that. So, it might have been a good laugh, but um, hey, those two characters really deserve to die. I mean, seriously, when you look at a horror film or any movie whatsoever, and you see a character goes, he's gonna die. He deserves to die. Yeah. And you want to see them die, and they come out, and they get killed off screen. It's like, he robbed us of the satisfaction of watching this bastard die. I'm mad at you. So, yeah. Everybody actually in the party actually gets tired. They want to go skinny dipping. So, Tina uh, actually, winds up, uh, go, actually winds up going to, on the barn to check on them. And get this. During this whole segment, the uh, T uh, Jamie actually uh, escaped the clinic along with Billy to actually go uh, to the uh, actually go to the barn area where because he knows where the hell the, she is. So, oh god, this gets stupider and stupider. Anyway, Tina actually finds her two friends dead. She goes to the cops; they're dead. Thank fucking god. Anyway, Michael's in the car. Actually, Michael's in Mike's car, which is a hot rodding car, and he turns on. He's about to go after. Her actually starts to chase her around just for a little bit until Jamie gets aside, until Jamie and Billy get aside. He goes after them instead. He almost runs over Billy. Actually, I think the original version was that Billy was supposed to get run over and killed, but that didn't happen. I guess it's because of the fact that he's a young kid who was just trying to help Jamie, so... And he's an innocent bystander. Okay, let's, um, move on. Anyway, instead of which, he actually goes after Jamie in the hot rod car, and this really feels out of place, honestly. I mean, it really does feel completely out of place. Plus, Michael crashes the car into a tree, which explodes. I mean, how much fucking gas did he put in that thing? Seriously. Or was uh, Mike's car just illegally modified to actually take in a shitload of gas, and it had an illegal prop in the engine to make it go really fast, and kaboom! That's what happened. Actually, you know what? I, I really don't fucking care about that. Anyway, we get the false hope, though, because we hear Michael uh, honking the horn, because his head is on the horn, and then it stops. He gets out of the car. He's about to stab Jamie until Tina comes in to sacrifice herself to save Jamie. And 
Honestly, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw this on the VHS version, which I've had for years, I just assumed the fact that maybe Tina had survived and she was just taken to the hospital. But after watching the Blu-ray edition and actually watching Dead Meat's Kill Count, uh, thank you, James A. Janice, for that one, <laughs> by the way. Uh, after watching that, it's been fully confirmed, according to the internet as well, Tina is actually dead. So that's why she doesn't appear for the rest of the movie or ever return to the franchise. Thank God. So, yeah. Anyway, Billy and uh, Jamie get lost in the woods. Eventually, Loomis finds them. The cops uh, come in and take Jamie uh, take away Tina's body. She's dead. Just move on. So he tells everybody to go straight to the Myers house to set up a trap for Michael Myers. And he yells at Michael to go back home where this whole thing had started. And the Myers house in this movie is not the exact Myers house. You know, this is weird because the previous movie, we actually got a good chance of what the Myers house actually looked like. But yet, in this film, they went to a completely different location, where the Michael, where the Myers house was more like a mansion. It's weird. Well, to be fair, I can actually see the house, although the house actually went under renovations, I can see it being aesthetically livable. And I can actually live there. But this is a Halloween movie, so let's just move on. But it's not the Myers house, so let's move on. So they pretty much set up a trap for Michael Myers, except at some point, Jamie actually has another vision about Billy, so all the cops go right back to the to the clinic. The doctor and the nurse that were caring for Jamie uh, were both dead. Well, we actually see the doctor's body. We don't see the we don't see the nurse's body. Supposedly the body that was being taken in the background, the internet has confirmed that that was the nurse. So it's like, okay, fine, she's dead. Oh uh, yeah. Well, there was even a sequence earlier in the movie where Michael was supposed to be chasing Jamie, but it was an hallucinate. But it turns out that was actually a hallucination because the guy who was going after her was the janitor because he saw the kid was in distress. He was trying to go in and help the kid. I was like, hey, hey, kid, it's just me. Relax. What's wrong? Okay, come here, sweetie. Come on. All right, come on. Let's get, let's get you back. Nurse, come here. All right, come on. Let's get you back to bed. Come on. Let's go. Okay, that's... Uh... Actually, to be fair, that sequence was really that bad, so whatever. Anyway, Michael actually shows up at the house... Uh where Loomis, Jamie, and some other cop are there, and there's another cop outside in the car, which, of course, Michael crashes it and bumps it, kind of like a rear-ends the guy, then kills him in the car. Okay, whatever. Now, okay, the man in black, the man in black has been seen going into the, has been seen around the children's hospital, so maybe it was an assumption that maybe he did this, but, uh, no. Uh, the, the internet's saying that Michael actually went there first, killed them, their bodies were discovered, and he and as for Billy, nobody knows what happened to him. Supposedly, there's somewhat of a rumor going around saying that Billy was killed by Michael off screen, or maybe Billy was killed by the man in black. But either way, we don't see Billy at all for the rest of the movie. Or and he's never mentioned at all later on in the franchise. So I guess this Billy they probably knocked him off and nobody realized it. So I feel sad for this character. So anyway, Michael makes his way into the house while Loomis tries to convince Michael that uh and this is by far one of the only times we see Loomis standing side by side with Michael Myers. It's kind of surreal, and it's the only decent shot you're ever going to see in the movie. Trying to convince Michael that everything is here, and he's trying to. T and of course, while well, Michael doesn't actually believe Loomis, so he st so he slashes Loomis and throws him off a banister while he goes after Jamie. And he breaks open the door that Jamie is at, in the room that Jamie is in. The cop tries to fight him off, but he winds up getting thrown out the window, being hanged. <laughs> So Jamie goes down the dumbwaiter. Michael tries to grab her. Okay, she went down the dumbwaiter. He goes down to the basement. And this is a shot I've actually found out that some fans of this movie actually do like the most. Because in this shot, this actually did happen. But apparently Jamie was... But apparently Daniel Harris was actually in mortal danger during this actual scene. Because the actor playing Michael Myers was very uncomfortable with this scene too. Because he was stabbing a real knife right through the ventilation shaft. Uh, because he had no idea if Jamie was even behind there, and he was just told to stab it. So, hmm. All right, so this is actually a real terrifying scene, but thankfully nobody was hurt. So, maybe Daniel Harris got a scrape or two during the scene, but either way, it's a very intense shot. And, of course, it's a shot that even Michael's actor was very uncomfortable with at the time. So Jamie makes her way up to the attic, where she discovers Max's body. Yeah, her dog Max is dead. Rachel's body's dead, and Mike's body... Why is Mike's body up there? What? Anyway, she there's a coffin up there, too, of a nine-year-old girl, which is actually around Jamie's age. 
because Michael dug it up at some point and brought it up to the addict. Why? I have no idea. But here's something a little bit interesting. Earlier on, the, the man in black was seen in the Myers house. So maybe he was the one who put it up there? I don't know. This is beyond fucking weird, even for me. I, I don't know. There's so much plot points that are not even making any sense. But it doesn't really matter. Michael makes his way up and, well, Jamie says uncle and it eventually makes him stop and they have somewhat of an emotional connection and he takes his mask off just to see. And Jamie says, you look like me. And she tries to touch him, but he freaks out. He completely freaks out and he goes on a complete rampage and destroys the entire and tries to destroy. He puts his mask back on, of course, and he tries to destroy her and the entire addict. But she makes it downstairs and. But Loomis grabs her, and he's Loomis at this point has lost his mind. Yeah, come on, Michael, come get the little girl. And Michael's just stalking them throughout the whole house until he makes it to the living room area where Michael happens to be. <laughs> where Michael actually happens to show up. And what happens? Loomis drops a fucking metal net on him and keeps shooting him multiple times with a tranquilizer gun. Michael grabs the gun and throws it away. Loomis, in a fit of rage, just grabs a two by four and starts beating the shit out of Michael. Uh, uh, just continues pummeling the shit out of him with a two by four, yelling out, That's a fucking stroke! Loomis actually had a fucking stroke, and didn't believe it or not, originally, before the sixth film came out, this is originally how the character was supposed to die. Yeah. Up until the sixth film, Doctor Loomis was supposed was a, was supposedly dead. Yeah, we don't see Loomis after we don't see Loomis after this after the scene. It's uh, it was presumed that he died during the scene, but it wasn't until the sixth film we find out no, he just had a stroke. Oh my god! And the original ending was was supposed to have Loomis actually die off, but it, this was later retconned, so he survived. Jesus. Jesus, titty fucking Christ, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. So, yeah, he has a stroke and he lands right on Michael. And later on, the police actually come by and they actually arrest Michael and they actually all have him all chained up inside of a cell. So, basically, Ser Sheriff Meeker from the from the fourth film, you know, the guy's, you know, the, guy, the father of the daughter who Michael killed with a shotgun last movie, yeah, he's barely in this movie, too. So, anyway, Meeker tells uh, Jamie that uh, the National Guard's going to come by and take him, actually take him to some maximum security prison where he's going to rot for the rest of his life and supposedly die. But, of course, Jamie says he'll never die. Whatever. So, a trooper takes Jamie out uh, to a patrol car to take her back to the clinic, take her back to the children's clinic, and, believe it or not, the man in black starts walking in Sets off a bomb and starts shooting everybody, killing all the cops that are in the building. All right, the patrolman who was with Jamie goes running in and he gets killed too, off screen. Jamie is beyond freaked out at this point. So she goes back to the cell. She walks into the station. She sees all the dead cops and Michael is not in his cell anymore. It's been broken open. And the movie basically ends with her screaming, No, no, no. And that's how the film ends. But you want to know what the real fucked up part was? In this version of in Halloween 666, which I reviewed in my first Halloween episode, we actually found out the real ending was why it was cut. I have no idea. Maybe because uh, the movie was already too stu was already too dark as it is, and this would have made the movie even worse. Was that Michael was being shoved into a back was actually being shoved by the cult members of Thorn into the back of a van, and the man in black actually grabs Jamie, and that's how the film was originally supposed to end. But that was cut and was reserved for this movie. Well, originally, anyway. Oh, God. So that was Halloween 5. As you can plainly see, it's not my favorite film in the franchise at all. Look, I've actually said that the fourth film was actually... I actually like the fourth film more than the fifth film. For obvious reasons. The fourth film feels more like a slasher film. This one is more like a jumble fucking mess. So, Christ. You know what the worst part is, too? Oh, yeah. I can't actually... I gotta do one more Halloween film. Yeah. I can't just end my Halloween... Uh, my October reviews on this. No. 
I gotta do Halloween Curse of Michael Myers, the original, the theatrical cut next. I don't think I have the strength for it right now. This movie was just that fucking bad that, you know what? Next film review, I'm gonna review, I'm gonna review something else before I do Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Huh. As for what it is, it'll be a surprise. So until then, y'all take care. I'm pretty sure Rex has got like a video has got like a video game review coming up at this point, even though he's been kind of slacking on it. So, so I'll see you guys then.